My name is Val Coles. Being a full-time cinematographer, I've had the chance to film commercials, music videos, events, and more. I've always been telling stories from behind the lens. However, this year, I'm stepping out of my comfort zone and placing myself directly into the unknown. A year and a half ago, we released Haunted Niagara, a documentary based on local myths and historical paranormal data. Comments, we've read all of them. Our viewers wanted more, so for this reason, this year, we are going all out. Over eight months of filming, countless hours of footage and historical research, hundreds of miles of travel. Joining me is my team. We will be spending the night at three extremely paranormal locations in Ontario, Canada. Each location will be structured significantly different than the last. This is Haunted Ontario. What makes a location haunted? Is it the history or the present? Some say certain locations act as portals for the deceased, while others say it's the history of the location. From good spirits to bad spirits, we are here to not only conduct our own experiments, but to learn from these locations. Ontario, Canada spans at over 1 million kilometers square. That's just under 500,000 square miles with an estimated population just under 15 million people. This province experienced the War of 1812, Nazi prisoner of war camps, asylums for the criminally insane, and much, much more. Our adventure begins in a small fishing town named Pentagushin. Pentagushin is an Algonquin name, devised by the Abenaki tribe, meaning place of the white rolling sands. With a population just over 10,000 people, this town was taken over by Lieutenant Governor John Simcoe in 1793, turning it into a strategic naval and military town. Upon request, we are here for one very specific location, 83 Fox Street, otherwise known as the Beck House, home to Charles Beck, his wife Amelia, and nine of their children. The Beck House is one of the oldest standing buildings in the area, and it's no secret around town that the former owners haven't quite left it behind. Charles was the wealthiest of the local lumber mangates, owning the Beck Manufacturing Company, later becoming mayor between 1892 and 1895. Charles had a tragic passing, May 11th, 1915. On this evening, he was headed into town by the Pentagushin Bay when him and his horse and carriage fell into the freezing cold waters. Many say the very carriage he built was the one that ended his life. As we arrive at the Beck House, we are surprised as to how well preserved the building looks. The current owners want to keep its history while maintaining its Victorian aesthetic. At the time of recording, the Beck House was rented out on the Airbnb platform. The owners are generous enough to share this historical mansion with people who want to experience a piece of Ontario's dark tourism. Me and my team received exclusive access to the Beck House, and for this reason, we will be spending an entire night in the most active room, the sick room. This room was used by Amelia on the days before her passing, the wife of Charles Beck. Emilia died at the age of 43 from a ruptured spleen, leaving her husband and young children behind. Since we will be spending a full night at this historical location, we wanted to ask one of the owners, Brenda, if she can tell us more about the location. Um, I didn't really believe in ghosts or spirits, you know, yeah. uh, m mainly because we don't see them. We don't have any interaction, we don't have any need to or reason to. 
So when we looked at the house, I figured it was haunted as soon as I saw it. Right. And a lot of old places are anyway. Um, but until you have things happen, you right. know, then you start to believe. Immediately after our conversation with Brenda, we notice we're losing daylight. Therefore, we start preparing for nightfall by setting up nerve center right in front of the building. As the sun sets behind the lake and day turns into night, I left out a very crucial detail. Joining us tonight is a group of world-renowned paranormal investigators named the Paranormal Seekers. My team reached out to them specifically for this location due to its historical significance. Rachel Cross, lead investigator. Allison Cronin, professional researcher. Sheena Burrows, photography specialist and investigator. And finally, Lisa, the team's psychic medium. Upon arrival, Lisa requested we do not disclose any information about the Beck house with her, since she will play a crucial part in uncovering its mystery. The Paranormal Seekers also bring alongside them the world's most sophisticated paranormal equipment, a digital single lens reflex camera used to capture photos of spirits, the REM pod which picks up electromagnetic fields that spirits can manipulate, the PSB7 spirit box used by spirits to manipulate radio waves in order to communicate, Ovulus 3, an electrical speech device that utters words depending on electromagnetic waves. The K2 meter, a device used to measure electrical fields in an immediate surrounding. And of course, the SLS camera, capable of shooting thousands of infrared lasers within an area, indexing and keyframing human skeletal structures. So when I first walked in, uh, when we got here, uh, I felt there was uh, at least three spirits and I was drawn into the uh, room there's like a little closet that I saw um, and when I was coming back down the stairs I felt like there was there's something negative now I haven't figured out if it's negative energy or, or a negative spirit yet um, when we go back in I should be able to figure out that out pretty quickly but there is definitely three spirits yeah, we've all had very weird like headaches uh, coming up here, progressively getting worse, all describing it in the same area without knowing about each other. Yeah, there's, uh, they're waiting for us to come in for sure. Yeah. Uh, there's been a lot of activity in the middle. In that middle window for yeah, sure. Yeah, at the very top. At the very yeah. top. So. We will now be entering the Beck house directly into the sick room where Amelia spent her final hours. mess with your auric field yeah. right okay. and you're going to feel things and you're going to see things and, and so it's just a really good practice to get into especially like as soon as you wake up ground surround to protect for your day then you're good yeah so like I ground surround and protect our team before we go on any investigation yeah so I turn off all the cameras um, I was just walking in this room because we're gonna sleep in here tonight and I, I said a word like, yeah. And then I heard that word echo back into my head, which is, I, I don't think I've ever experienced anything like that. Yeah. And, and you were explaining to me that we're, we're empaths. Yeah, yeah, so you're empaths. So you feel people's emotions and you feel things that, Yeah. I don't wanna say normal people, but you'll feel, you'll feel more than other people will. We've spent the day and night setting up for this investigation. As we shut off the lights in the sick room, we are now preparing to hopefully make first contact with the spirits that reside here. Who's with us right now? Girl? There's a girl. There's a girl with us right now? Sounded like Mark. Mark? If there's a girl with us, can they tell us her name? Oh. Is 
throat? Listen carefully to how the spirit responds to Rachel's question, asking if the person talking is a girl. If there's a girl with us, can they tell us her name? Oh. Is that the one with the boat? I said back. I heard back, yeah. And then I heard got March. And I was just trying to look at dates. So Jesus. I can't just... breathe. So, this, like... <clears throat> Whose house are we in? Yeah. Death. Is this your house? Did that just light up? I wasn't watching. I was actually oh. looking at the room behind Allison. I looked over there too because mm -hmm. I can see a shot. Yeah, I feel there's something there. behind me. Yeah, there's somebody there. watching. Yeah, I can yeah. feel somebody watching. Yeah. I could sense it and I just keep waiting for them to touch me. And they're like, all right. <laughs> hey, if you're in that room behind everybody here that's really dark and that there's that red circle on the bed, can you touch it and make it go off? Please. It will not hurt you. I just saw somebody walk by it. Hello? Notice as Lisa turns around, looks into the sick room and mentions she saw a shadow walk by. Immediately following, the spirit says hello, which sounds as though the spirit was embarrassed. Lisa caught them. Who's the man in the other room? What's your name? What's your name? I heard Becca down. Didn't that sound, so sound like shut him up? I thought it was. I really thought, like, yeah. I was like, what? Shut who up? Solo compound. This it, thing's really going. I just got like really goosebumpy. <laughs> Me too. It's. It sounded like it said shut him up. And well, I was like, him? which him? Whose emotions am I feeling right now? Like somebody is. Like I am on the verge of tears. Yeah. First. I don't think we should. She's the one that's supposed to be here. I feel like somebody like, like a nervous habit, where it's like, they're like almost picking at themselves. Mm -hmm. Like. As Lisa talks about what she's feeling, there's an orb that shoots right out of the table, moving in unpredictable ways towards the ceiling. We have enhanced this clip and ruled out the possibility of this being an insect since it doesn't have wings and its movement pattern is completely different. I don't know how to explain it, but they're like picking at their skin. Yeah. yeah, yeah on yeah, their yeah. fingers and yeah. stuff. Yeah. They, they, yeah. they chew. Yeah. No, no. This is like like, picking. like pick at their nails and stuff? Like around their nails? Yeah. Their like as, a, as a nervous habit, like pick, yeah. pick, 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 mm -hmm. pick, 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 till it's like bleeding. Male or female? Yeah. As the Seekers mentioned, they keep feeling and hearing movement in the darkness behind them. Allison decides to lay on the bed where Amelia spent her final days. With no more communication on the spirit's end, we decided to move into a different room of the back house. This is where one of our team members, Ashley, sat in a chair and the Seekers caught a figure standing next to her. All this is being captured directly onto the SLS camera. Oh, oh. Okay, there we go. Here we go. Right by that chair. Wow. In between Ashley and Amelia. Oh, yeah. Right there. You can sit on the chair, for sure. Come Ashley's join the party. Like, the no, I'm hearing little bangs over here. And it's funny because that's exactly where this thing is standing. You want to hold my hand? Can you wait? Oh, it just said save when you asked if it wanted to hold your hand, Ashley. And then it said mad. Oh my god. Are you mad? If you're mad, raise your arm. It's just standing there. Mm -hmm. Can you touch my hand? 
Put your hand down that show. Yeah. I see it. Yeah, you can see it. Yeah. Or can you just wave to us, please? I'm waving. And let's. Oh, oh, there's somebody much bigger. <gasps> he's holding on to something. Oh. Metal. You said he's holding on to something and it's like metal. No. Really? Yeah. He's like standing in that kitchen doorway, I think. I think he it's... is huge. Oh or my she. gosh. Oh, he's moving oh, closer. Oh, oh no, it might be two. the same one. This was the last recorded clip where we interacted with the paranormal at the Beck House. For the remainder of the night, we sensed and received no more evidence of spirits. We did spend the night sleeping directly in the sick room, due to us running a separate experiment where we turn off all electrical devices while we sleep. Ashley did feel that she was being touched on her leg at around 4am, following my experience of being watched throughout the night. We can't conclude who or what was in the building with us at the time of recording. We certainly hope we communicated with a member of the Beck family. However, it definitely felt like something slightly darker near the end of the night. Waking up in the morning, we wanted to visit the museum, the original building where Charles Beck had his shop and place of business. We were asked by one of the museum employees for her to remain anonymous. Therefore, we managed to record some audio from the story she was telling us. This is what we got. So we have had a lot of activity in this building. This one, yeah? Yeah, mm -hmm. a lot, yeah. Oh, so, wow. yeah. So the floor was sandblasted, but the footprints stay. They just won't go. So, um, look, um, it looked like a man's foot, right? Mm -hmm. So the, um, like the speculation is, yeah. So Charles maybe would stand here watching what was happening, and um, they're his footprints. Inside this building are the historical possessions from the Beck family. The possessions include Charles Oldsmobile, which has been left in its original state. The original shop where the townspeople and employees of the company may purchase goods using Beck's own currency. And finally, Charles Beck's last will and testament. This document is private and the family requested the contents not to be shown on camera. Each piece of evidence led to a deeper rabbit hole. And our conclusion is, we're not done here.